It's wise to investigate a product's performance before deciding if its price is reasonable. If it is, then it's a good purchase. However, this time we will do things differently, as the product we're taking a closer look at is one of the cheapest on the market, which is its biggest selling point. SMSL PS100 is a DAC that costs below $30, which can already make some people buy it without giving it a second thought. DACs that cheap are something we rarely see on the hi-fi market. Please leave a like to support the video. Thanks. And let's take a closer look at its build. It's a small black box with three RCA plugs sticking out from the back. There is an SMSL logo on the top. Almost every piece is made out of black matte plastic, but on the front they went for a glossy black plastic, which is a fingerprint magnet, honestly. So if you touch your DAX as often as I touch my cables, it is going to require cleaning pretty often to remain clean and good looking. Speaking of the front, there are individual white LED indicators, plus a single button that acts like an input selector. The button feels okay, I don't think that it's going to fail you with normal use. We've got four rubber feet on the bottom that are very, very effective at making it stay in place, unless there is a stiff, heavy cable hanging off of it. In that case, its weight is just unable to keep up and it's going to float. Generally, it's made pretty decent. You can hear some rattling inside while shaking it like crazy, but getting a product this cheap, you don't expect it to be made out of brass or gold, do you? What's the most important, speaking of the build, is that it doesn't feel like it could break easily. They had to cut corners heavily to make this product, and I think that the build quality is where they decided to do that. I would say that they did it perfectly, without sacrificing anything important, like the port's quality too much. While we're on the topic of the ports, let's see what inputs it is equipped with. Going from the left, there is USB Type-C, HDMI, optical toss link and a digital coax. On the very right side, we've got left and right RCA analog outputs and there is also Bluetooth built-in but no fancy codec sadly. Their licensing cost wouldn't allow this device to be so affordable. Technical specification listed by the manufacturer mentioned the output level to be 1.9 volts RMS, which is I think a bit lower than regular, but it's understandable, since with higher DAC output voltage and no level control, you could be distorting your amp and have no way of fixing that. And yes, the PS100 has no volume control. Going down the spec sheet, the total harmonic distortion plus noise in short, THD plus N is 0.005% or minus 85 decibels. It's not a measurement monster, of course, but for the price, I think it is doing very, very well. The dynamic range is 96 decibels, as the maximum supported bit depth is just 16 bits. For the sampling rate, the maximum value depends on what we use as an input. With USB, it maxes out at 48 kHz, but with optical or coax, it goes up to 192 kHz, which is very good. Why is there this discrepancy between USB and other inputs? I would assume it's because they wanted to save a little bit on the USB chip, as they can be costly with higher specs. For the DAC chip, they're using one of the ESS solutions, namely ES9023. Now let's focus on the sound impressions. Did replacing a high-end DAC with this one make my headphones or speakers sound terrible, unusable, unpleasant to listen to? Let me surprise you, it didn't. DACs don't make as big of a difference as amplifiers and far less of a difference than the actual headphones or speakers. The sound was still decent, however it didn't shine in any aspects. The clarity was fine, nothing spectacular, it just couldn't reach my R2R DAC clarity. But R2R DACs are known for it, and the PS100 is a Sigma Delta DAC. It doesn't use an R2R array. Same for the soundstage and imaging, it was just fine. The bass amount was seemingly increased, but it wasn't more impactful or anything like that. I experienced a little bit of dryness in the sound and the instrument separation wasn't too distinct. But just because this DAC doesn't sound amazing, it doesn't mean it can't make your system sound better. What do I mean? When you have a set limited budget for source gear, DAC and amp, you could pick up this DAC, saving some money here, and you could put it into a better amp, which is going to make a bigger positive sonic difference to your audio setup. I believe that this is the best thing you can do in a situation like this, saving up on a DAC and putting more money into your amp, or even better, if possible, into your headphones or speakers. Thanks for watching, feel free to subscribe to my channel and watch the next video.